The Ming Dynasty, 1368-1644 Despite their achievements, the Mongols remained unpopular in China. In 1368, the Mongols were overthrown by a Chinese monk who established the Ming Dynasty. Under the Ming Dynasty, China enjoyed nearly 300 years of peace and prosperity. Ming emperors expanded the empire to include Korea, Burma, and Vietnam. The Ming constructed an immense imperial palace in Beijing. Known as the Forbidden City, it became home to all later Chinese emperors where they were revered as gods. Under the Ming, Chinese society consisted of two main classes. Most people were peasants, barely earning a living. The peasants were largely illiterate, and their lives centered around their relatives and the village. The other main social group consisted of the scholar gentry class. They owned the land on which the peasants worked. The gentry greatly respected learning. The Ming restored China's civil service examinations, and children of the scholar gentry studied to pass these demanding tests, which focused on Confucian teachings. In addition to these two classes, there were merchants and craftsmen who lived in the Ming cities. Craftsmen excelled at printing and in producing silks and porcelains of great beauty. Urban life and trade prospered, while China exported silk, porcelain, and other luxury goods. The Ming Emperor sponsored several great naval expeditions in the early 1400s in order to spread the news of China's wealth and power. The Chinese explorer, Zheng He, sailed to the coasts of India and Arabia. Let's take a closer look at Zheng He's expeditions. The main purpose of the voyages was to display the might of the Ming Dynasty to the rest of the world and to receive tribute from them. Zheng's fleet was impressive. At its height, his fleet included more than 300 ships, with crews totaling close to 28,000 people. In contrast, later in the century, European explorer Christopher Columbus would command only three small ships. The expeditions won prestige for the Chinese government and opened up new markets for Chinese goods. Zheng He and his crew returned to China with exotic treasures, such as the first giraffe the Chinese had ever seen. They also brought back a new understanding of the world beyond China's borders. The voyages inspired some Chinese people to immigrate to the ports that the expedition had visited in Southeast Asia and elsewhere. Zheng Ha's voyages stirred controversy, though. Confucianism promoted a stable agrarian lifestyle, and scholars worried that greater interaction and trade with foreign cultures threatened China's social order. Some critics simply looked down upon other cultures, deeming them barbaric and vastly inferior to Chinese culture. Other critics thought the expeditions were too expensive. Zheng He's travels not only ended, but he also discouraged all Chinese from sailing away from China. To emphasize this point, building a ship with more than two masts became a punishable offense. The voyages had one positive short-term result. They put a stop to pirate activities off the coast of China and in Southeast Asia. 
However, after China stopped sending armed merchant ships into the ocean, the pirate activities resumed, especially on the China Sea. Direct European contact with China was established in the 16th century. In 1557, Portuguese traders established a settlement on China's southern coast. Catholic missionaries followed these merchants to China. They attempted to convert the Chinese to Christianity. Ming China became involved in a pattern of global trade. China exported silk and porcelain to Europe and imported silver as well as new foods such as sweet potatoes and corn. The Qing or Manchu Dynasty, 1644 to 1912. The Manchus of northeastern China invaded China in the early 17th century. The Ming Dynasty collapsed after a successful rebellion in 1644. The Manchus defeated the peasant rebels and established the new Qing Dynasty, also known by historians as the Manchu Dynasty. China's new rulers incorporated traditional Chinese culture kept the civil service examinations, expanded China's frontiers, and used non-Manchu Chinese in government. The new dynasty lasted more than 250 years. Like the Mongols some 400 years earlier, the Manchu were ethnically and culturally distinctive from a people they ruled. However, they were less tolerant than Mongol leaders and they resolved to make their culture dominant in China. For example, men were obligated to dress in the Manchu style, wearing braided pigtails, and those who refused were executed. Like the Mongols, the Manchurians supported Qing, put their own people in the top positions of government. And like the Mongols, the Qing dynasty did maintain continuity with some traditional Chinese practices. For example, they maintained the Chinese bureaucracy, including the civil service exam. In time, some, but not all, Chinese came to accept the Qing dynasty as legitimate rulers of China. Economic Changes China was a proto-industrial society in comparison to Western European nations, meaning that although some industry existed, the vast majority of people still worked on farms. As the population of China grew, the country experienced a land shortage, with the government attempting to rectify this by setting laws that limited the amount of land people could own. China's exports grew during the Qing dynasty. China sold tea, silk, and porcelain products in Europe and India. The exports were largely purchased with silver, as China imported few goods. The demand for silk and the availability of silver for investing led to the creation of many silk workshops where former peasants could work for wages. The empire also instituted a tax on traded goods, which increased its wealth. Chinese society. Social relations during the period reflected conservative adherence to Confucianism, which honored the family above the individual. Generations lived within the same household, and the elder generations were especially revered or honored. Groups of extended families bonded into clans, and this solidarity helped to maintain social stability.
Women continued to have a lower status than men throughout the Ming and Qing dynasties. For example, formal education was restricted to men only, and divorce was not permitted. Pressure was put on widows not to remarry, and those new widows who committed suicide were honored after death. In addition, the traditional practice of binding women's feet continued to confer social status on women even as it greatly restricted their physical movement.